Hi, welcome back to Hell, also known as the Blair White Project podcast. Another episode is upon us. She has risen and we're here. We're all here together. We're going to have a good time. Uh, We have a loaded podcast. Can I just say, I can tell just by the thumbnails of the woke TikToks that the producer put together that I'm going to have an aneurysm or three watching these. Uh, We have some asexuality news because apparently asexuality is a movement with activists Did y'all know that? I didn't know this. We're going to get into that. Did y'all hear my elbow pop just now? That's how you know you're getting old. Holy. All I did was move my elbow and she said, like, wow. Um, In less depressing news, actually, this is depressing. We have some Pearl Davis headlines, also known as Just Pearly Things here on YouTube. Uh, She wants to take away women's right to vote. Interesting. Also to outlaw divorce interesting we're gonna get into it and also talk about my new guilty pleasure slash obsession which is these very cringe red pill dating podcasts uh we're gonna get into that but first let's dive in to this first thing so this tweet of mine is one of my most viral tweets of actually kind of shocking because i may or may not have been um puffing on a little something in bed and a little out of my mind at, you know, midnight when I tweeted this and I woke up and it was viral. Anyways, so this woman named Yasmin Benoit, who apparently is a model. I mean, she is quite gorgeous. We'll give her that, although she's not so bright. Love when a person can do it all, when you're good looking and smart. Love that. But this person, you know, she only has one thing, which is her looks, and that's fine. But anyways... (laughs) So she is. She went viral on Twitter for posting with this asexuality flag, which didn't know they had a flag, and saying this, asexual people deserve equal rights. We deserve legal recognition. We deserve protection. Thank you, Stonewall UK, for allowing me to march with you again at Pride in London. So here's my whole thing. Well, let's go with what I responded first. I said, y'all want to be oppressed so damn bad. No one has ever been denied any rights because they don't have sex, you absolute cringe ball. And I stand by that because please name me a right that someone does not have because they are not having sex. It doesn't exist. I personally, my elbow just popped again. I am getting old. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, To me, this is, you know, making a mockery of... LGBT people, you know, first of all, you can march with whoever you want to march with. You can go to whatever event you want to go. But like the claim of like, we deserve legal recognition. What are we putting on the books about people because they don't have sex or they're not interested in sex? Please make it make sense because it really is not making even a drop of sense. Uh, You know, I'm not one of these people who thinks that asexuality doesn't exist. In fact, I fully believe it does exist. As someone with an extremely low sex drive, which is me, common misconception, people, you know, obviously sexualize me a lot. And I do post revealing pictures and videos on Instagram. And like I dress a certain way that I feel like communicates that like I'm a sexual being. I mean, hi, my boobs are out. But that's actually the opposite of what I am inside. I actually have almost no sex drive. So it's not much of a stretch for me to imagine someone having no sex drive, right? Like it's not such a stretch of the imagination. I feel like if you have people on one end of the spectrum who maybe have like sex addictions and like are just super into sex, it's like, of course the opposite has to exist and there has to be people who don't have any sex drive. Um, But the idea that you are oppressed because you're not having sex, if anything, who are the probably the oppressors in Miss Yasmin's mind? Probably evil conservatives, right? Probably evil social conservatives, religious people, They don't want you to be having sex. Abstinence is like what they preach. I mean, obviously they want like marriage after the abstinence, but ain't nobody getting mad at you because you're not having sex, girl. No. And it's like, it's not that I don't respect it because that's your life choices. Those are your life decisions. That's what's true to you. That's what makes your bell ring or, you know, your bell's not ringing apparently, but whatever. Uh, But like, Girl, what? So she got dragged. My tweet has how many views? Like, it's crazy. Um, 
6.5 million views. I felt a little bad. I've never even ratioed someone that bad. I mean, holy sh- crap. Um, but, you know, people were telling her like, what, why, what rights don't you have? What legal recognition don't you have? And she couldn't give one straight answer. And she recently said that she's going to um, come out with a paper later in the year explaining what rights asexuals don't have. Let me just tell you, if you can't just think of it and you don't just know it, you probably have all your rights. This is a great example of victim culture, right? A victim culture d- warping people's minds and whether they know it or want to admit it or not, right? Because they don't consciously know it, but people like this absolutely see value in being oppressed. They absolutely see it as a status symbol in certain circles. So Yasmin, you're not oppressed, babe. And that's that should be good news. You should be, hallelujah, oh, you were wrong. You're not oppressed. You have every right everyone else has. Very embarrassing. And also just kind of weird. I mean, again, I, I believe in asexuality, but you have all your rights, sis. All right. We have Aubrey O'Day. I had sex with Donald Trump Jr. in a gay club bathroom. And? What are you trying to say, sis? First of all, are you trying to insinuate that he is gay? Because he had sex with you and you're a woman, right? Like you're still a woman. So it was heterosexual. All this does is make him seem cooler, in my opinion. I'm like, I kind of want to party with Don Jr., bitch. Because anyone who's doing that, it's like, you're probably a good time. And the idea that when has Don Jr. ever been homophobic? If anything, he was like the only Republican on Bud Light's side telling people to leave Bud Light alone. I know that was like a trans thing, not a gay thing, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, the Trump family in general, like, I know people like to characterize them and everything else as far right. But at the end of the day, to their core, they are New York liberals. They've been around gay people longer than I've been alive. They've been around trans people longer than I've been trans. So I've never seen Don Jr. be homophobic. That's number one. So whatever hypocrisy you're trying to paint here, it's making you look bad. You're the one utilizing gay as some sort of insult here towards Don Jr. When from what I can see, he's not homophobic at all. And anything to distract from Hunter Biden, the real crackhead. The real cokehead in the White House literally just found coke in the White House. Can I tell you I did coke one time in my life? Can I just get real or no? I did do it one time. And uh, one time only. And I don't understand it. I don't understand the hype behind it. And I got good stuff too, by the way, because I did it with um, someone famous, someone rich, someone who has money, someone who has access to good stuff. And it still was like, it was very fleeting and it didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel bad. It was just nothing. I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, so people who get addicted to that, I don't know. Uh, but regardless, you get what I'm saying. There's an actual crackhead on the scene. And it's amazing that this article was released simultaneously with that story, with the Hunter Biden crack story, coke story. So transparent. Like the corporate press is so transparent. And the fact that so many people don't see through it is amazing. Everything is so calculated. Everything's so timed. Everything's such a lie. Like, you're better off any messaging coming out of the corporate press. You're better off starting with believing it's a lie and then work from there to find the truth. And I often say, if John Jr. was really this, like, horrible person, this, like, crackhead, this, like, piece of shit that, like, the corporate press has tried to paint him as over the past few years, there would be a lot more out about him. Like... Anything he's ever done bad would be out by now with the intensity that they are trying to cover up for Hunter Biden. Like, they really can't make Don Jr. look bad. He, he's very clean. He's very clean. We have this. <laughs> this headline is like, kills me. Female Andrew Tate thinks women shouldn't be able to vote or get divorced. So this is just pearly things, Pearl Davis. And Pearl is a very divisive figure on YouTube. I mean, she gets a lot of hate. And I'm not here to give her hate, right? Because, like, it's, like, whatever. Um, She was my guilty pleasure watching her, like, earlier in the year because she was bringing on, like, cringe guests. And I feel like she used to talk less on her show. And the less she talked, the more she was able to position herself as, like, intelligent because she would bring on all these guests. She has a dating podcast, basically. It's one of these, like, red pill dating podcasts. And 
on the podcast, it's very easy to come across as intelligent when you go scour like the streets of London, which is where she's from, for like the dumbest women, bring them on and you're automatically going to look better. But the more she has talked over time, it's kind of like, okay, maybe not, maybe not. Uh, So let's just watch this clip of her on why women should not vote. Why would you want to remove, just from yourself, the right to vote? I found out that only 5% of women wanted the right to vote. Because they've been conditioned by men to think that they shouldn't have a vote. I I mean, that's what they say, but, you know, I started reading their writings, right? And what I found out was that the reason a lot of women advocated for it was because they believed it was the beginning of the breakdown of the family. You know, before you became one in marriage, 85% of people were married. What has happened 100 years later? What's that going to do with them having the vote? Well, it also goes back to responsibility. Again, men... Men are 80 to 90 percent of the military. They run all of the infrastructures that make society run. If we want an equal say in society, then be equal. Do 50 percent of the hard job. So men don't run all the infrastructures that keep society running. I mean, I look at you know the medical system as one example, full of women who keep everyone alive, right? That's just one example. Um, of course, The thing about the red pill space and these dating podcasts and, you know, how they talk about like male-female interactions and, you know, the sexes and like it's very – and I don't need anyone to be offended by this because I have a lot of love for autistic people, but this space is very autistic and that's just me being real. It's very much like they hyper fixate on things that are technically true at the expense of things that are – practically relevant right so it's like i'm never a fan of people who you're free to think that women shouldn't have the right to vote or women should not vote or whatever but i'm never a fan of like these fantastical like changes people claim to want like you're never going to take away the right the right for women to vote so like why even talk about it like if you're really about helping men and women and improving relations of the sexes which i would assume her podcast is it's like Who's that helping? Something tells me Pearl would not advocate for women being exempt from paying taxes, right? And it's like, in what world should women not vote and have a say in the laws that dictate their lives and society and the way society is structured when they're expected to pay taxes and pay into that system? That makes no sense. Also, the invoking of, well, at the time when, you know, when we were given the right to vote, a small percentage only a small percentage of them wanted the right. It's like, I'm struggling to A, care, and B, understand what relevance the opinions of people that are dead have on society today. And today, women absolutely need and deserve the right to vote. The thing is, like, I remember a time early in the internet when the space was completely dominated by feminism. Think of like Lacey Green, uh, you know, all these fem- feminist YouTube channels. And my gripe as starting out as one of these sort of like anti-feminist YouTubers, which I did at the end- beginning of my career, was that it places women in the role of victim and it attacks men unnecessarily. So that was all true and that was bad. Any movement that is doing the opposite, that's not good either. Like, does it have to be one extreme or the other? Right. So only 5% of women wanted the right to vote at the time that it was granted to them. That's that's fine. And it is true that men were given the right to vote because they were being drafted. And that's true. However, you're not taking away the right for women to vote. It's, it's just not happening. So why even talk about it? Just to gain attention, I guess, which is fine. Nothing wrong with gaining attention, but it is what it is. I just find this whole genre very cringe like this this is a good example so this thumbnail <laughs> this thumbnail is t- is titled pearl humbles undateable feminists and it's a you know it's supposed to communicate that pearl is like dropping a truth bomb on this undateable woman and it's like the reality if you watch the video i watched this episode of the podcast the girl that is the undateable one has a boyfriend and pearl is single and perpetually single and has not had a substantial long-term relationship. That's my main gripe with this entire genre is the hosts of all these dating podcasts 
from what I can see, almost none of them are currently in healthy, successful relationships and have never really been. Like they're perpetual single people, talk perpetually single people, that is, talking about how to find a high value man, how to find a high value woman. And it's like the thing about content like this is like there's bits of truth in all of it. So there are certain things that Pearl says that are absolutely true. And those are not to be negated. But like the juxtaposition of like, how are you really humbling this undateable woman when she has a boyfriend and you don't? And I know she didn't make the thumbnail, but it's like, that's the point is that they position <laughs> they position people in actual relationships as like undateable because their relationship doesn't look the way that they think that should. And it's like Pearl is perpetually single. And Pearl isn't any of the things that she claims make a high value woman. Pearl isn't a virgin. Pearl has never been married. Pearl is 26 and hasn't had kids. Like Pearl is very masculine. Pearl is very much in her masculine energy, which is the opposite of what people claim to, you know, what need to harness to find a high value man. You're supposed to be feminine. Pearl is probably the most masculine woman I've ever seen, not even just visually, but like, you know, her personality. Like, look at this thumbnail. She's very much like, she's aggressive. Um, so I just struggle to find a lot of value in this content beyond like the cringe aspect of it, which is actually amazing. I feel like this clip is a really good example of what I'm talking about. This is how it hurts men and women. If there's someone that's very, very young and goes into a marriage and has kids when they're like 18, 19, 20, a year into the relationship, it gets really, really abusive. Even though it might be rare from what you guys think, it is. Uh, if it would happen, what would you recommend for those people? Would they divorce or do you want them to keep going in the relationship? Keep going. You can't divorce. And that's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive. You got to endure. People are too... You want to stick in the wanna, relationship? People are just... See, I mean, look, people I'm, nowadays I'm be are just... Situation. For anyone that might be in that situation, what would you recommend? Okay, you endure. Think, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you what. Endure. It is such an extreme example that I can't give a prescription for what other people should do. What Jesus. about if two people sorry. get married, sorry, to have a kid, and then the wife starts cheating? Do you think they should divorce? Absolutely. Jesus himself said, in in cases of adultery, divorce is. So permissible. you think the divorce is worse than physical abuse? No. For what? the children, for cheating. Sorry, you think that cheating is worse than physical abuse? abuse. For the sorry. children, yes. Absolutely I, th I think, I think I'm not going to say divorce, this is worse. Divorce than, I mean, is worse I for the Amazing. Divorce is worse than abuse for the children. Wow. Nuts. That motherfucker in particular is corny. That was the corniest motherfucker with that ill-fitted suit in the earrings talking about... Okay, so... That is just a good example of how these podcasts, while you can find certain tidbits of truth in it, like let's, let's, there are certain things that, you know, are commonly espoused on these podcasts that are absolutely true. Like, you know, men aren't interested in the necessarily career successes of women, typically, statistically, right? It's always nuanced, obviously, but that's typically true. I feel like m men are more interested in the beauty of women, of women and, you know, what they can bring to raising children and a household, et cetera, than their, you know, career endeavors. And women typically are more interested in career endeavors than the looks of a man. Things like that are very, very true. And I feel like women do need to hear that kind of stuff because I think a lot of women think that if they become very financially successful, that that will get them a man. Whereas you look at like all the Kardashians, they can't keep a man to save their lives. All these female celebrities that have millions and millions of dollars are getting cheated on. Beyonce got cheated on. So there's certain tidbits, but like abuse is worse for, or divorce, cheating is worse for, like I just can't. I'm like losing my mind even listening to that. So here to say, you should not be enduring abuse from anyone of any gender role in your life. No, get out because women and men die from abuse all the time. And the whole like, it's rare, saying it's rare, abuse is rare. How, what do you mean? Is abuse really that rare? So as someone who grew up in a very dysfunctional household where I saw a lot of 
very bad things and a lot of bad interactions between my mother and father. I wish those hoes would have divorced. I wish those hoes would have divorced because it would have been better for me to see them in healthy relationships with other people other than them each other than some of the stuff that went down in my household. And I wish my mother would have left. I wish my father would have left. Divorce is bad. Abuse is worse. Especially if we're talking physical abuse. I mean, what even is that? That is so corny. And the point is like, the people on these podcasts never, ever have any long-term relationships to show for it. Can someone who's married start one of these podcasts? That would be great. Also, I feel as though these podcasts give the viewers typically a very irrational view of women of the opposite sex. Here's a good example. This is a clip. <laughs> You'll see. It's not global for 99% of people. A girl yeah. going in Kansas City is not getting flown out to Dubai. Yes, yeah, she is, bro. No, no. no. Look at today. No. You guys are yeah. wild. Yeah. I guarantee you guys are somebody wild. Get tonight. You're coping. Man. Well, I just want to hear for, for the record, yeah. for you three to answer this. Uh -oh. What percentage of college women do you think are being flown around the world to fuck? Very I want to hear little. from all if three of you. If I had to argue, I want to hear. Off of like probability wise, if I had to argue, maybe like. 30, 40, 50? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Insane. The fact that this man, this is the Fresh and Fit podcast, the fact that he genuinely thought it didn't sound astronomically ridiculous, stupid, to say almost half of women are getting flown out to other countries by rich men, this just shows the bubble that they've created. I don't even think half of the women they bring on their podcasts have been flown out by rich men to other countries. Absolutely insane. And it paints such a false world for like impressionable young men who are watching this. And I feel like any content in general that pits the sexes against each other is just toxic. I mean, men and women are meant to complement each other and far be it for the tranny to sit up here and talk about men and women because kind of failed at being one of those and not really making it fully as the other one, however. I do feel as though I do have some unique insight into male-female relationships just based on the fact that for half of my life, I had a brain that was ruled by testosterone and the second half of my life, estrogen. And can I tell you that that experience has really allowed me to sort of look at a lot of these podcasts where they're talking about men and women and high value men and what women want and what women want and how to make a successful relationship and how to be whatever. Half the time I look at those conversations as someone who's had the transition and whatever and I feel like I'm looking at it from like a bird's eye view in the sense of like I completely understand why men have this misconception of women and I completely understand why women have this misconception of men not here trying to say that I know the full experience of either or however sometimes it's like these podcasts are just so stupid because it's like I just I can't you really if, if you're watching these podcasts and you're coming away with the idea that half of all college-aged women are being flown out to Dubai nuts bizarre bizarre like i don't not, not even half of like instagram hoes are doing that that's even a small percentage i'm sure like talk about painting a false reality so this is a clip of a podcast a, a guy that i feel like makes a really good point and i just want to put it in here because i f agree with it how is this making you better as a man? How is consuming drama and entertainment, which is the most feminine thing you can do, how is it getting you more dates? When was the last time on one of these podcasts, they actually sat down and said, hey dude, if you wanna get more matches on dates, you should use a bio like this. You should take photos like this. You should fix this. You should use this specific opening line. They never do any of that. The reason they talk about theory and philosophy and the abstract is because they have no real world practical dating experience. Because people who have healthy, positive experiences or relationships with women are not this resentful, not this combative towards women. And perhaps the most toxic part about this for you watching these videos is that it models terrible behavior for your interactions with women. 100%. I feel like, you know, I think that there is a dating crisis in the Western world in particular. And I think that the reason these podcasts have become so popular is because a lot of people are looking for answers on how to date and the dating landscape is horrendous. I mean, dating apps and, you know, 
women and women you know in many ways like are more masculine than ever before men are in many ways more feminine than ever before and i feel like content that encourages people to step into their natural masculine energy or natural feminine energy that is going to make people happier however he's absolutely right these podcasts never actually give like productive advice they just like paint this false world and like again pet men and women against each other and i believe that men and women are meant to complement each other men can't exist without women and women can't exist without men uh so if you're getting your worldview from these videos i mean if you're consuming it just for the fun of it i mean like i do then get your life but if you're taking it seriously you might just walk away thinking that half of all women are on boats in dubai and women shouldn't vote and it's just like Calm down. Calm down. All right. So next we have <laughs> breaking news. The far right's obsession with fitness is going digital, says MSNBC. Apparently, being physically fit is a far right virtue. Well, you know what? If I had to choose between the far right's virtue of being physically fit and the far left's virtue of being fat and disgusting as fuck, I'm probably going to go with the far right. Insane. Insane. Like, granted, this article is on to something. It absolutely is a virtue of the far left to be fat and gross and nasty and proud of it. That's where the fat positivity comes from. That's where the Lizzo is beautiful comes from. She is beautiful in the face. I mean, she's not so... But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Who else is old enough to remember when far right didn't mean like being a normal person? <laughs> Insane. Insane. This is the same thing they did all throughout COVID and all throughout the pandemic, which was published all these like pro-fat, anti-fitness things, shutting down gyms, like during a virus that negatively impacted mostly fat people. If you think the media has not even your best interest, but even like a decent interest for you in mind, I'm going to need you to wake up. Because another thing being categorized as far right, we have healthy fitness mentality and we have being anti-human trafficking. Apparently that is now a far right virtue as well. If you guys don't know, this movie called The Sound of Freedom, it's um, a movie about human trafficking, child trafficking. And uh, it's obviously anti-child trafficking as any normal human being would be, as you would assume the American press would be, but they're not. The Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms, says the Rolling Stone. The QAnon tinged thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscience of a conspiracy-addled boomer. Wow. So... In one week, the media has turned being pro-fitness and anti-human trafficking into virtues of the far right. Once again, I am not, I, once again, I'm asking the left to stop surrendering being a normal functioning member of society to being on the right. Because at that point, at this point, that's what it is. Insane. I want to watch this clip. I couldn't believe this clip was real. This is... Uh, Mike Rothschild on CNN blasting the movie. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon but claim they don't know what it is. And the sound of freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. 
Sure. And the most durable and the most believable conspiracy theories are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false. But the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel and, by extension, only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie. You're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now, it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have. Disgusting. Did you hear that? Moral panic, as if there's not a legitimate reason to be in a moral panic about child trafficking. He just describes being afraid of human trafficking as a moral panic. Well, you know what? At least these people, even if you're describing people that maybe see the issue of trafficking in places that it just isn't, at least they're on it. At least they care. Even if they care and it make their, their whole life good, there are worse things to make your whole life about. And the idea that he could, they're lying to your face. The corporate press is lying to your face and we really need to figure out why they're defending human traffickers as if Jeffrey Epstein, it isn't confirmed that he ran an underage sex ring and involved high powered people and celebrities on his island and blackmailed people. Like, this is all shit that has come out. This is all confirmed. They won't release the names of the actual clients because there's plenty of people that the establishment want to protect, wants to protect. However, what part of that is conspiratorial, babe? I mean, it was a conspiracy theory before it came out and we were gaslit into thinking that there was nothing going on with Jeffrey Epstein until it came out. I'm starting to think this country is ran by demons, by absolute freaks, being pro-fitness, far right, anti-human trafficking, far right. Wow. So basically, if you're a normal human being with basic, rudimentary, entry-level morals, like 101 living on this planet type shit, you're far right. But see, this is the issue, right? It's like <laughs> when the far right shows up, what you going to do? Because you're painting normal citizens who are concerned about their children and children that aren't even their own as far right, as conspiracy theorists. Meanwhile, y'all remember Cuties, the Netflix movie? Yeah, that received praises by the media. But this movie, an anti-child trafficking, you know, movie that was made potentially by people that identify on the right, that has to be attacked. Disgusting. Disgusting. And if you think that there isn't a reason why they're defending this or attacking this, rather, um, I'm going to need you to just think about that a little bit. I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm going to see it, I think, tomorrow, which is exciting because I do want to watch it. Although I'm going to be a, a wreck emotionally because I'm just not good at movies like that. I'm a crier for sure. Uh, <laughs> but I encourage everyone to go watch it, especially because the media doesn't want you to watch it. If if the corporate press, if CNN is fixing their disgusting mouths to tell you not to watch something, you probably should. Baby boy, baby girl, baby that, you probably should. Insane. And then you wonder why libs support open borders and you look at the amount of trafficking that happens on open borders. So is the corporate press and the liberal establishment just, is it just their whole thing that they just traffic children and that's why they want the borders open and that's why they attack human trafficking movies and that's why they praise movies like Cuties? I often say, getting older is learning 
how many people do drugs, you learn that like more people than you would have thought as a kid do drugs, like upstanding citizens, like everyone's on something. You learn how many people do drugs and you learn how many people are diddlers. The country is ran by diddlers. And I was having this conversation the other day. Like it makes sense why there would be so many pedos in the highest ranks of industry and government and celebrity because first of all i think when you have everything in life when you have seven boats and you can get on a private plane to go anywhere in the world on the moment a drops hat you'll never be homeless because you have so much money like there's something to do with the serotonin levels and the like adrenaline that never quite gets going anymore because you've done everything and you bought everything and you maybe start doing deviant shit and maybe that leads people into like wanting to be diddlers i don't know i think that could be one aspect of it but then also really the only way you can get away with child predation and keep a career and remain in power is to be very very powerful to be at the highest ranks of these industries and these governments because you know You can get busted if you're less powerful than that. So it makes sense why people seek out positions of power to do this. Insane. I encourage everyone to go watch that movie. All right. It is time to react to woke motherfucking TikToks because I just have to say, first of all, like I said, at the top of the show, the producer did his big one with these TikToks, collecting these ones. I haven't watched them yet, but I can tell by the thumbnails the clowns in the thumbnails, that these are going to be insane. So let's pray for my brain that nothing explodes. I don't die live on camera with you guys. And let's see what these motherfuckers have to say. (laughs) A lot of people ask me, how can I make my communication more gender inclusive? Simply No one asked you that. Use names and descriptors instead of assuming people's pronouns. Drop gender-based titles unless otherwise specified and address groups of people with y'all, folks, and everyone. When we go out into the world, we see and meet people, and unfortunately, our brain automatically assigns a gender term or pronoun to a person based on certain characteristics. As you already know, these automatic assumptions are often wrong, and they restrict us. They're quite literally not often wrong. In fact, in 99.9% of scenarios, they are correct. Like, that was just a black and white, like, false, stupid statement. Like to say that often, more often than not, or oftentimes, whatever (laughs) Zimzer said here, uh, that you're wrong when you gender someone. No, you're actually right almost all of the time. And it's actually illogical to restructure society based on the 0.01% chance that you may be wrong, right? Uh, Isn't this the person that was on Dr. Phil with uh, Matt Walsh? Pretty sure. Um, That, that beard is giving. That beard is giving more grown in than most men I know. Like, I don't know what this person gets called when they walk around. I mean, I would, I would just avoid this person at all costs. In fact, I would run away. I would run to the hills, Iron Maiden. I would book it. Because you know it's just going to be some sort of bad interaction with this person. There's nothing positive coming out of interacting with this person. I would assume this person is like crazy because they are. Um, (laughs) Yeah, restructuring society based on like the one or two people in your entire life that you may come across that look like this and you won't know what to say to them. Yeah, so everyone has to get asked their pronouns. No, no. In fact, I I always say... These people, these non-binary motherfuckers, their entire worldview, what they fight for in society is contradictory to transsexuals like myself because if you ask me my pronouns when I'm out, I'm going to be actually offended. I'm going to actually be upset because in what world did I do all of this to my face? Come on, surgery. In what world did I put these here? And take hormones and change my name to Blair and like to still have people be like, oh my God, what are your pronouns? No, no, 
No. See, do you see how that's contradictory? Transsexuals want to blend in. They do not want to be asked their pronouns because they want you to assume they are the sex they are trying to present as. These people don't care about upsetting transsexuals because they have infiltrated the T. And it's about what they want and their rules. Well, I'm sick of that shit. I'm over it. I'm so over it. I'm under it. You need to get a grip. You already embarrassed yourself on Dr. Phil, baby girl, baby boy, baby they, baby zer, whatever the fuck. Just go away. Not permanently. I'm not saying anything, you know, harsh here, but just like, you know, don't make these stupid TikToks. Thanks. Or call yourself something other than trans. So that, oh, oh my God. I was not ready for that one. It's the jump scare for me. So the caption is, this is a lesbian woman. We're expected to respect and accept her identity and use her preferred preferred pronouns or we're labeled a bigot. Damn. The producer is really bringing the uh, bearded ladies through today. Is it like, I can't. You can be both. I'm both, actually. I am a trans woman and I have a cisgender girlfriend. We are in a lesbian relationship and we absolutely love each other. She says she supports me 100% and we're going to get married soon. Someone call the cops. I feel like the uh, proclaimed cisgender girlfriend is tied up somewhere. It's giving serial killer. It's giving... Delusion is not the word. It's giving removed from reality to the point that everyone should disperse. Like just almost just leave this person alone. I would never tell this person to their face they shouldn't call themselves a lesbian because I'm not trying to get knocked out. Rest in peace, lesbianism. It was fun while it lasted. Rest in peace, lesbianism, because I see why lesbians often are the most vocal about trans ideology, the excesses of, you know, trans ideology. And like they post screenshots of people like this on like lesbian dating apps. It's like baby girl, baby boy, baby they, you're not giving lesbian. That beard is giving grown man like not man grown man right (laughs) here's the thing i saw some tiktok the other day and it was like a a trans lesbian couple it was like one of them was a trans woman one of them was a woman and the trans woman had uh gone like full bottom surgery and like looked pretty kind like looks pretty good you know like was definitely giving passable woman and for me i'm like listen Is that person technically biologically lesbian? No. Am I going to go out of my way to tell that person they're not a lesbian or a trans lesbian? Whatever the fuck. Live and let live, baby girl. However, this, there is no argument. There is no argument. Like, someone needs to check on this girlfriend of theirs because it's not giving safety. All right, so this one uh, went very viral on Twitter. I saw it the other day, so I actually have watched this one, but let's just, let's just see. This person says, I'm an army veteran and I'm sick of all the guns here in Texas. So I'm starting with mine. So first of all, God bless everyone who served. God bless the veterans. I love the veterans and the veterans love me. I'm not even going to make this about this person, Jason Rogers, because God knows what he's been through. God knows what trauma has come upon him because of his service. So in my opinion, people who have served almost always get a pass, right? Like, so this is less about him. It's more about what I'm going to do, which is I, upon watching this, I'm going to go buy two more AR-15s. That's what I'm going to do. First of all, what you're destroying isn't even a gun that libs are trying to ban. It's like, the statement I feel like would have been maybe a little stronger on your end if you really wanted to live out like that if you were destroying a an AR-15, but like 
you're just like hammering a shotgun. Like I don't demented. So who knows what he's been through to, to bring him to this perspective. But uh, if you don't like the guns in Texas, go to California, go to Texas or to New York, go to Oregon, go to Washington, go be lived out somewhere else if you don't like it. Because, baby, all I have to say is come and take it if you want to destroy mine with a little sledgehammer. It's not going down like that. This is what it is. <laughs> fat phobia should make you uncomfortable. Let's see. When people are fat phobic on this platform, you should be uncomfortable. You should be uncomfortable. It is irresponsible to come on an app where there are vulnerable young people. And be so fat phobic. What are these pauses? To spread such hate and harm. And do it under the guise of caring about people and making it about people not caring about themselves. You don't get to do that. And it's tolerated too much. And it's made light of heart too much. Fat phobia should make you uncomfortable because it is intertwined with every single other system of oppression that exists. It is related to sexism, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, classism. Girl, shut the and fuck so up. When you talk I cannot stand this. So I'm not going to sit here and say, like I say, with a lot of the like white fat positive, you know, fat fluencers, whatever. I'm not going to say that the same thing for them, which is they don't understand actual like discrimination and bigotry and all these like, because clearly she understands what racism is. She's black. However, that should be even more of a reason for you to never compare the two. What do, and <laughs> what does fat phobia, if such a thing exists, which it does not, have to do with homophobia? I could maybe get behind you if you made some kind of point, not get behind you. But, you know, I could see maybe a stretch of your, like, demented mind if you were to say that it has something to do with xenophobia because, like, certain cultures have different beauty standards, whatever. Maybe I could stretch my mind to understand why you would say it. Not agree with it, but understand why you'd say it. But homophobia? Sexism? Demented. Someone needs to get her her pills. The weight loss pills. Not the SSRIs. The SSRIs are keeping her in a place of complacency, clearly. Because, damn, you are fucking nuts, bitch. <laughs> Insane. All right. Ew. I hate this person. Why'd they give me this one? The caption to this is, would you hire someone who demands you use they, them pronouns and tells you off for misgendering? Uh, let's see. And I genuinely think that people don't realize how deeply microaggressions and misgendering affect trans people in like every facet of life. So here's the tiny example. I auditioned slash interviewed for this film intensive and one of the things I talked about in my interview was being a gender fluid actor and wanting to find affirmative spaces to tell queer narratives. One of the administrators who has her pronouns in her email signature pushes me on to the final round with this email that misgenders me three different times. My pronouns are in my email signature, my Zoom name, my resume, my application, and on my film reel. So it's annoying. And I add this. Before I've even met anyone for this final interview, I've had to correct an administrator in front of her boss, and I've already had to be on the defense defending my own identity. This just creates an awkward power dynamic that could have been completely avoided. And depending on this person's response, it can either be a non-issue or it puts me at a major disadvantage. This is something cis people just do not deal with. First of all, I know a cis person who does get misgendered. I know a man who is quite small and feminine and once or twice a year he gets called she. So that's a lie. It's not just a you thing. It doesn't revolve around you, the world, you know. Uh, there was a study recently that 
resumes with they them pronouns in it are overlooked more often than without and uh it's for good reason how are you entering a job communicating that you're going to be a fucking headache you're a headache you should identify as a migraine because that's what the fuck you are baby girl baby boy baby they you have a beard if you don't want people to call you he maybe shave your beard because it's going to be a lot easier for you to shave your beard than try to undo millions and millions of years of evolutionary psychology and the subconscious mind that tells you when you see a full beard, you are looking at a he, at a boy, at a man, at a grown man who makes other TikToks about how he's going to gangbangs. We reacted to one where he was like, I just left a gay gangbang, but also don't call me he. You're busted. You're crusted. You're disgusted. And I'm disgusted because you you are just a, 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 like a gnat in someone's ear. Like, bzzz, like, get out of here. And clearly, if you're having problems with people who are woke, like, like, like you said, the person that you're corresponding with has their pronouns in their bio. Clearly, if even they can't get it straight, the problem is you. It's you. You're the problem. You're the issue. It comes down to you, babe. No one else. So get it together. Let's see. Oh my God. Ew, I can't. TikToker claims to suffer from time blindness and blasts employers who make employees come on time. Let's let's see. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, <laughs> you know? And then the person I was I with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job, you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time when there's other solutions that we can look to. I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that. Yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. And then I asked that person, how can you feel good about yourself upholding this kind of system? And then to think I'm entitled. No, if people think it's okay to treat others like this, uh, that's entitlement. Gen Z is not okay. Time blindness. Time blindness. Remember when Kim Kardashian got backlash like last year for saying that her advice to women in business is to get off your ass and work? And she was canceled as if she said the N-word or some shit? Like, that's how you know how demented this generation is and how anti-work this generation is. You're making it easier for people who do want to work. I will say that. What a joke. <laughs> yeah, baby girl, if you can't make it to a job on time, you deserve to get fired. Because you're costing people money and costing them time. And it's fucking rude. Because while you're not there doing a job, someone else has to do it. So while you're so upset about how people are treating you, trying to hold you to something that you agreed upon, which is to be at a place at a certain time, why don't we talk about how you're a rude piece of shit because you're expecting someone else to pick up your slack while you're not even in the room when you should be. Wow. Something really got into the head of, the gener of this generation and told them that dismantling the system is like, the thing to do. It's like you're not dismantling the system by fucking not being able to be somewhere on time, baby girl. You're dismantling your life. That was embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. It was horrible. Not putting in proper work to remember people's pronouns and gender them correctly is abusive behavior. Let's see. 
I get so many comments like this and I want to explain something. Being misgendered can be an incredibly painful experience. In that moment, we are reminded that the world places us into a bucket that we do not fit in. And it is incredibly dramatic to grow up being constantly told you're something you're not. So for a lot of people, being misgendered triggers that trauma. So if it looks like I'm mad, it's probably because I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> in the same way that when we stub our toe, we scream expletives because we're in pain. <laughs> also, us non-binary people were forced to educate ourselves on our own existence. So it can be frustrating when we see people who are not putting in the work and constantly making mistakes. And I know it is new. I know mistakes are bound to happen. And I have patience for people who are genuinely putting in the work. I know so many of you don't want to be hurting non-binary people, but the truth is when you misgender us, you are. And to expect us to hold your hand through it while we're being hurt, that's abusive behavior. Abusive behavior. These are the people that say that, you know, misgendering is violence. Tell me you've never been smacked without telling me you've never been smacked. Not saying you should be, although not saying you shouldn't be. Uh, like the hysteria is just nuts. At some point you reach a level of like, or you should reach a point in your adult life where you understand that nothing is worth getting this hysterical about. Like zooming in and I'm hysterical. Like, Especially, you're saying you're non-binary, so that would probably entail, I don't know, it doesn't say in your thing that you're going by they, them, or Zizer, or some kind of like neo-pronoun. The expectation for people to just use that, you're abusive. You're policing the language of others. You are expecting perfect strangers to abide by your way of speaking without knowing you. You're expecting people to look at you presenting entirely as male because, baby, the cherry red chapstick isn't exactly placing you in the non-binary category, right? With the five o'clock shadow and the short hair and the hat and the complete menswear, right? The little earring is not exactly placing you in a different category. You're giving male. And so people that see you are going to see that and call you male. The idea <laughs> that non-binary is somehow a category of trans is like wow i was talking about this the other day it's like wow you know trans people as a group have always been kind of infiltrated we've always had to come up with new words to describe ourselves because everyone like all these people will try to be us it's like we had to call ourselves you know transsexuals and then we had to change it to you know, you know, the cross dressers came in and we had to differentiate ourselves from them and now they're back and now non-binary people, everyone, all these people want in the tea, but you could never be in the tea. And you know, in your heart, you never could. You know, you never could. The cherry red chapstick isn't cutting it. It's just not. All right, you guys. That is it for this podcast. I love you. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast channel as well as my main channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And please rate this podcast on Spotify. Five stars if you're so inclined. It helps me out so much. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye, guys.